Writers do a lot of writing that you as a reader will never see. Hey, what's up? I'm Carrie. I'm a writer. And today I'm going to be talking about how I use writing as my second brain. This is going to be more of a podcasty style video rather than a like watchy style video. So if you want to throw this on in the background while you clean your room, do the dishes, make a cup of coffee, whatever. Cool. Glad to have you here. Let's hang out and chat. So when you've probably heard, you may have heard the term second brain. You may not have. If you haven't heard of the term having a second brain, basically it's a system where folks will organize their life on paper, or digitally, like in Notion, journals, bullet journal, what have you, but they basically have some system where they can take what is in their head and get it out of their head so they don't have to deal with storing all of it and trying to remember everything and feeling overwhelmed by how much there is to remember and what have I forgotten and all that. And I thought about that and yeah, like that's definitely part of what a brain does, but that's not all of what a brain does. Brains do more than just remember. Brains also think, they create, they problem solve. It's a really powerful little bowl of half set jello in here. So I wanna talk about more that aspect of my second brain because of course like I have gosh where is she over there because of course I have my bullet journal where I keep down my to-do lists my tracking random thoughts things like that I have my planner which is separate the way the way I think of it is this is for today and yesterday and this is for tomorrow it's how I keep it organized I also have my notebook for rough drafting, for brainstorming. I prefer brainstorming with pen and paper. I actually mentioned this in my previous video that I love brainstorming pen and paper. I also have a commonplace notebook that I'm test driving. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this, but I wanna test drive having a commonplace notebook. But as you can see, a lot of writing, a lot of journaling. I also have a notebook somewhere for my morning pages. If you've read The Artist Way, you've seen about morning pages, I'm sure. And so there's a lot where I'm just handwriting with pen and paper in my life. And there's a lot of research behind handwriting with pen and paper for improving your existence. I'll link some of them that I have found so you can take a read through if you're curious. But basically there's evidence that shows that not only is it good for memory, obviously because you've written it down, you have a thing to reference, but also it'll just stick better if you handwrite with pen. Handwriting with pen also helps with processing memories. If something difficult has happened in your life, you can write your way through it and that can really help you with sorting it out in your head. There's a lot of benefits to writing with pen and paper. It activates different parts of the brain. So you have different neural pathways going, lit up, working. Allegedly, it's a good cognitive exercise, especially as you get older. So the sooner you start, the better it is, probably. There's just a lot of this research out there is talking about how good pen on paper is. For me, the way I'm using it, let's say for brainstorming, is I will just start free writing thoughts about characters, plot, world building. And as I'm handwriting these things, some of them will jump out at me and be like, oh, that doesn't ring true or that doesn't feel right. That's not what that character would say or do. I'll write just dialogue between characters to get a character interaction to see how would these two characters, if they had met over a cup of coffee, how would they talk to one another? In doing that, I can see like, oh, actually these characters have met before? What's their history? Or, oh, this is the first time they've met. So how will they get along with one another? And that's the kind of stuff that I can really only get through brainstorming. And there is genuinely something about pen on paper where you have to slow down a little bit and be a little more deliberate. I, I type pretty fast. I'm one of those kiddos who grew up touch typing from the age of six. So I type really fast. I can type about a hundred words a minute when I know what I need to type. But my handwriting is not like that. My handwriting is so much slower than that. But there is something about forcing your brain to slow down and really think about the words that are going on the page and form the concept and the sentence before you type it really makes you study it a little bit harder than when you type it. 
And yeah, I'm talking about all this brainstorming that I'm doing, all these scenes that I'm drafting. And what you need to understand is that writers do a lot of writing that you as a reader will never see. If you're a writer and you're relatively early in your writing, it can be easy to think that everything you have to put out there is perfect and complete and done. And I cannot stress enough how much rewriting we do, how much exploratory writing we do. We'll think, oh, is this scene, maybe I should write it this way. And then you write it that way and you go, no, that's, that's bad. That's a bad option. Great news, delete key exists. You can just get rid of it. Actually, I would recommend against hard deleting anything. Save everything that you've written into another file because it might become useful later. It might be a snippet of dialogue. You're like, I wrote that really clever thing and I want to reuse it, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Past you saved it. So you're okay. Writers, we, so much writing happens that people do not see. Stories go through so many drafts. Books go through so many drafts. Yeah, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. Of course, I'm sure you've heard of writers who are pantsers versus plotters. I don't like that dichotomy. I think we're all a bit of both, but there is that split frequently talked about. And if you are a pantser, I like the term discovery writer. If you're more of a discovery writer, boy, you write a lot that gets thrown away. And if you're a discovery writer, like I am to a degree, might I recommend pen and paper for some of your discovery work. Yes, it'll slow you down a little bit from typing, but you might be surprised at the output you get. Again, this is all just explore it, be curious. Try it out. But yeah, so that's for brainstorming, for, for rough drafting, but also there's a side where I will do it for my, I guess, mental health. We'll put it that way, my mental health. I do the morning pages most mornings. Not every morning, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not great at it, but I try to do it most mornings. And what I have noticed is when I'm handwriting and it's supposed to be free writing, it's any thought that comes into your head. You literally could write, I hate morning pages for three straight pages. There's, there's no boundary on it of what you can do. But I've used morning pages to think about what I'm going to do in the day. I've used it to work out story ideas, either in what I'm currently working on, or if I have multiple stories battling in my brain, for which one I should write, working that out in morning pages can be really helpful. And what I found there is that when I write negatively, when I write that I'm gumpy, that I'm tired, that things are difficult, that I'm stressed, that kind of sets a tone for my day. But when I write about projects I'm excited to work on or my cat, like one of them, she's back here. When I write about my cats and how cute they are or what I'm looking forward to doing or just just like stuff I'm grateful for when I write things like that my mood is so much better I can get more done in the day things are just move a lot better in my life so there's also I really think something to that study talking about mental and there's one for physical healing in what you're writing and if you are writing with healing in mind. I found when I write in the mindset of healing, of forward progress, of recovery, that that sticks so much better than saying it out loud to myself in a mirror. You know, if you're doing like your daily affirmations in the mirror, try writing them down. I found them to be so much more powerful when I hand write these things. So yeah, I don't know if you watching this, if you're a writer, do you use pen and paper? Do you like doing exploratory work with your writing? Do you do the drafting scenes and journal entries from characters? Do you do that exploratory work to see what your story wants or needs? If you do it with typing, try it with pen and paper, see what happens. And if, if you do try it with pen and paper, let me know what pen and paper you like, because I, um, I'm going so down the fountain pen rabbit hole. It's getting worse. I have too many pens and I want more pens and I want to experiment with more paper. So if you also are very into the tactile experience of pen on paper, let me know what you like. I'd love to hear. I'd love to talk as a sidebar. I got really excited this week when, was it this week or last week? I guess it was last week. I got really excited last week when the Lamy Dark Lilac ink drama broke containment and hit the New York Times. Slow news day, I guess, because that's one of those stories that you tend to keep in your back pocket and be like, well, gotta, gotta sell some ad space. 
let's drop fountain pen drama on these nerds. I was very excited about that because I got to talk about fountain pens with a lot of people. So if you want to talk fountain pens and paper and what you're into, let me know. I gotta be honest, I don't know what paper is in this notebook. I got it randomly at Itoya in Japan. I think it's cool because it's got this little like human skeleton stuff at the front. And since uh, I'm writing a, a, I guess it's kind of a horror book. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I do know how to describe it, but I don't know how to describe it just yet. We're working on it. Kind of want to get it a little bit more firm before I talk about it more publicly. Not because I want to be like, oh, I'm super secret. Look at my super secret project, but more because I don't want to pitch something and then it's not what I'm working on. But yeah, I really am enjoying the paper in here. So I'm going to figure out whose paper this is. All it is to say, I would love to hear your pen and paper opinions if you write with pen and paper. If you don't write with pen and paper but are curious, ask some questions. I will happily answer any questions about pen and paper because I love pen and paper. But yeah, I think when we talk about second brains, just focusing on the memory aspect is only a portion of what your brain can do and only a portion of what your second brain can do. Because all I've ever heard is about the memory and I have not heard about the thinking portion of your second brain. So that's how I use it. That's what works really well for me. I've been really enjoying the process. There's something very methodical and kind of self-indulgent about writing with pen on paper, especially a nice pen. This is a Pilot Custom. It's a nicer pen. When you're writing with a nicer pen on nicer paper, there's something very like just self-indulgent about the whole thing. And I think as writers, it's okay to be a little self-indulgent, just a little bit. You don't want to get too precious with your process. I could do this with a big pen on a Mead notebook. It doesn't matter. Matter, but I do think there's something to the tactile experience on pen and paper and I encourage you to try it if you haven't already. So uh, yeah. Okay, bye! <laughs>